when we last were on this series, we had the foundation of the newer civilization, okay? Right? But uh, so there was a few rifts in the courts about, you know, rights, you know, taxes, stuff like that, between, you know, modernization or keeping it the same way as they're pretty decently strong. But this leads to a, a pretty major rift between the courts, which leads to a bit of it actually, at least to half of it breaking off founding their own civilization. This civilization is a bit more centralized, it has a bigger military using pretty sure called lamellar armor. And with these technological developments, they actually expand just drastically over the next few decades. And eventually they take they start to prioritize the coast over everything else. Just to say this will be a long video as I, as, I, as I don't really like the short editions, I was trying to make me like making more shorts, but I decided not to. Now going back to the Yellow Nation, they expand along the, the Persian Gulf, taking over the Qatari Peninsula or something like that. I don't know if it's, its proper name, as well on both sides. And I have like a key point here between trade, right? And, and like they. They don't really want to expand inwards, but they do slightly to see if there's like anything there. But I'm pretty sure Saudi Arabia has no rivers or natural lakes, not rivers, lakes. So they just sort of focus more on, on the coastline. They expand all the way up and around, and they meet up, uh, then they meet up. Explorers have reached into about the central areas here. So they haven't really, you know, tried to have exploration groups, right? So they actually do start to push in into the into the inland because they know where else to go. That isn't inland anyway. Now that they're dominating in the race between these two nations to get you know superpower status, and here explorers travel out, and w w exploration there's bound to be there's new civilizations popping up, which leads to a new purple or pink civilization coming up. They're mainly based in the Mesopotamian area, like around there, and they form the first Mesopotamian civilization. It's quite big as there's a large chunk of explorers, but they slowly expand outwards, and eventually they actually have a really good economy, better than the others at least, even though they're relatively small. And I'll call this the boundary of what people know of, you know, the boundary. And then, yeah, this is what they know of. Obviously, they know, like, there's a, there's no, there's a land there, they don't really know much about it. Yeah, that, that's about what they know, right? And the rest is just, you know, unknown land. They have vague knowledge about it but, but nothing really nothing much else also also just saying oh i'm like a dispo who has you know big civilization i want to have multiple of them which leads to another point where i'm gonna add like egyptian civilizations italian greek and anatolian and since and okay back to the story since, since i said people are, are going this way after the mesopotamian founding definitely managed to reach into this area here right and they and they form of uh, the Byzantines pretty much. Uh, after a few decades, they get you know into the culture of the of the tribes around them. And yeah, what what I'm saying, yeah, culture and tribes and the lands around them. And they're really expansionist, and they expand technology a lot. Not just it's, it's not it's not just conquest. Of course, it's technology, economy. They expand their economy a lot, and they're expanding to be first like Rome. Yeah, not Rome, the Byzantines, Eastern Romans. And they make a settlement, settlement in Crimea, they go all the way up into Bulgaria, and then into Greece. They take most of Greece, Epirus, Albania, lands there. And this area remains unexplored. Like, they know of this and they conquer it after a while, but they don't know much about that. Now, like the Greeks of real life, ancient Greeks, they make they make settlements along here, 
in this area here. Not I'm um, hunting in Sicily, but I know in southern Italy. And this is where well Rome comes in. Well, I'm from the Italians. They quickly expand, and they meet up with these guys here. Now, these guys want territory from these guys to get you know control of these areas here for trade and also, also expansion which starts our first major major war well not major but big war of the series the romans make small ex advances Actually, i'm probably going to color just these guys blue for now as to symbolize you know them being you know blue you know like the defender in, in this story so yeah they're gonna be in blue just saying which should help you guys distinguish you know whose it is because because for me it's hard to see i don't know for you guys it might be drastically different but i don't know really because i i can't you know you know focus on two things at once so, so don't blame me now the romans they you know they're strong right they're normally quite strong and they expand down this coastline slowly taking these lands and eventually cutting it off even though it's still easy here to go through there and they managed to expand south leaving it here but these guys are open to be attacked and, and that's exactly what they are they're attacked they cut off and this is a, the first major defeat for the romans they still have made expansions but with the army made mostly gone until they get new recruits they push further and further back all up to this peninsula here and yeah and a big spearhead has formed but they're on at a time as the romans now start to push back pushing down this border here and even nearly cutting them off pushing forward and definitely cutting them off and now the wars like back to like you know topsy-turvy right but a small incursion here might change everything for the romans as they expand on this coast line here capturing this and persevering you know you know like the thing you know what commu communication and supplies because i'm just giving like a quick, quick graph this is the roman navy and yeah they're cutting off any sort of form of supplies it's a big blockade of, of you know supplies yeah like i said and they go into epirus was this is epirus right yeah epirus and so, the war, so far the war is not going well for the Byzantines and it's going to get further and further proved when the major spearhead is formed again what a surprise and they manage to defeat more forces they actually capture all of this area and now they're free to expand as much as they want and uh, it's going to be a big thing you know thing but like the, the treaty is decided and like Rome gains all of this land it may be a bit unrealistic considering there's a lot of land to obtain but this one I'm gonna go through and you can't ch and you can't you know change my mind unless I get bombarded in, in any comments but yeah this is what Rome gains and the Byzantines are left destroyed like right? they just lost pretty much everything but don't worry they ascend at some point like always they, they yeah they always ascend you know, Rome deserves Crete, claims it. Same thing, they take over Sicily. There, 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 there. You know, normal Roman stuff. Right? And now you're your first, like, major power. Don't worry, the Byzantines will be back soon. Now we're back here. And I'm gonna form the first Egyptians. Oh, um. You saw nothing. They're going. I I'm gonna keep the Byzantines as blue. I think they, they, I don't know, probably this color is different. Don't worry, it's actually different, but it looks better. Oh yeah, it's way better for you guys, I can't see that well, but I know it's better for you guys, because... Okay, I think that's all I have in there. Everything? Yeah, I'm going to change the color to this. This Egyptian civilization goes down the Nile. Oh jeez. A major expansion down the Nile, and this is their borders. Like they keep it like that. 
like that. Yeah, so they're big now after only a few years. Or a few decades actually is a better way to phrase it. And they they're very expansionist, like every single nation in every mapping video that's ever been done. Like seriously. And they're pretty much like a Red Sea Empire, not even Egyptians anymore. This is pretty unrealistic, I guess, but this expand all the way down the coast. And yeah, this is really goofy looking. They expand through into Arabia. It's like this mainly, you know, noble garrison, but they claim it. So that counts for me. And then they do this. They do that. And now these original civilizations are way behind. But one saving grace for them is the fact that now this nation is is actually going really strong after inactivity simply because you know they've been going up going themselves and now they claim all these lands also they also invade this nation for to get these colonies which is successful and leaving this state as a puppet to find the correct color of course as a puppet state being only Qatar and after a while they actually annex it and they have your first big you know truly Arabian state there's their borders I'm just gonna change it to make it look better yeah, there you go now there's like a big you know massive thing now right but now these guys here they're like we're falling behind and they make puppets all, all around them like major was actually bigger than them and after a while they follow the process of annexing them that's their process like it isn't worth you know sending actual exploration parties that belong to them truly and then they ex keep expanding and then now you have a massive nation here my mind this episode 2 the first one was a short video but now I'm diverting it into a major video it's been a few centuries since the Byzantines were here, but now the Byzantines are back. Was even is that the same color? No, that's the same color, right? That's different. Don't okay. I'm good. <coughs> also, they also give land to this nation here. They give some bits of Crete, not Crete, Cyprus. Yeah, Cyprus. I had a blank for them. Cyprus for money. Yeah, money is the most important asset. They, well, they expand down here, taking over lands in the Caucasus, and just generally ex exerting control over this region, like fully. And they meet up with their state here. They expand back down, and now they're really strong. Like they expand their, they go out there. This unlike the Byzantines, who ne I don't think ever really conquered these areas. Well, they had the control. I'm pretty sure as with puppets like Armenia, pretty sure, but like they didn't really, you know, fully annexed it. And now they're going to war for all of the Levant and this area, which was pretty successful, as they take over these lands take it back for the true Byzantines and they have two major enclaves which they also take this area down here and this area here now, now they're not really Egyptians anymore they're more like a Red Sea Empire they're still really big but not as strong economically but the Byzantines have ascended and they are back with blood blood they buy lands in Jordan pretty sure and Syria as they make the borders more clean like that that looks good now the back revenge, like they want all of Thrace, which like the Romans, they like, say no, like they're like pathetic, no way. And now, well, they suffer the price. All of Thrace is surrounded, it's taken, this area has gone, the, the entire thing, yeah. They lose pretty much all of Greece, and this area north, they lose it all, right? And the Byzantines expand on this, expanding. Tom makes tons of sense, right? Has to be. They expand like that. 
they also take over these areas here and now everyone is in the dot in, in the mud and well yes here here you go we have this massive empire here of course it's bound to be a rebellion which i'm not gonna do considering i love the byzantines like i think like the main point where you know history becomes you know less less you know exciting is when the byzantines fell I, i'm gonna go straight up and say that all right and things are really exciting when the byzantines were formed and when the carthaginians cannot be said the same and great here they are they want sicily they want their empire and they get their empire really really quickly not really quickly you couldn't say you couldn't really say quickly but they do it quicker than the romans did well in this scenario they they are but now they pretty quickly gain control of push all of this side of the seas the byzantines control this side romans control the areas around here like that right forget this yeah i'm really far behind <laughs> and yes so they are emerging power right the, the land military is not the best but the navy is is goated the romans they want to control this area right that is the romans so they invade but they're bogged down on this peninsula over here they're bogged down this peninsula and they won't and they can't really expand but the quicker they push out the more land they can take and, and eventually the Carthaginians allow the romans to have this bit of to have lands like that like that yes they allow the romans to have that and they are happy with that and they don't want full war but the romans are the romans and romans are treacherous and the romans want, romans want all of that so they pursue that they continue their invasion after a while and they push forward capturing all of that now what does Carthage do one they fight back or they give up they give up the fight and they lose everything except hispania or, or spain and eight countries rise and countries fall they also, they also lose Gibraltar in these areas and the Balearic Islands and that and the Romans follow the success by you know continuing their expansion and now this is like a Spanish state pretty much the Romans can now probably fight the Byzantines but it'd be better if they formed a bigger empire spoilers alert maybe just kidding maybe after a few more years the Romans are expanding to say the least they take more land and they reach Bordeaux they invented the Basque in Pyrenees and generally they're not being that cool to the tribes like if I'm if we're being honest they're not being that nice but some people the Romans still look nice so a federation of Gallic tribe which conquer the rest of Gaul and united as like a massive state against the Romans massive barbaric peoples I'm, I'm not saying the French people or, St or Celts are barbaric no no that's not my point but what I'm saying is that they're just you know barbarians like they're not that civilized not civilized centralized yes yeah, better and they managed to push the Romans back a lot they didn't have to make expansions on what they wanted like seriously it got us strong and they put the Romans, push the Romans all the way back they capture all these islands and yeah Rome is back in the, du in the dust but ton of events these guys want to unite with Rome to form a major superpower wow that that ended quickly didn't it Gallic supremacy just Roman supremacy when will they ever learn? Well, now Rome is strong, to say the least. And they continue to be taking all the rest of Spain, and they force the Carthaginians or Spain, Spanish now to unite with them, which they do. And now you have a pretty much Roman Rome. Makes sense. Rome. It would be bad for the rest of the world if Rome united 
with the Byzantines. But luckily, that's not going to happen in this episode. It may happen in the next episode. But yeah. I don't know how long it's been because I am really dumb. I think I may end the episode here. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.